I recently scored this fantastic Bluetooth speaker, but because it's portable, meant to be traveled with, I needed to create something padded and safe to carry it around in. So today's tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through the basics of how to make your very own padded gear bag for whatever you need. Let's get started. That's right, I'm gonna walk you through how to make your very own padded gear bag. I'm gonna focus on this kind of bigger version so you get a lot of the ideas. Of course, you're gonna customize it to whatever size you want. This one happens to be perfect for drumsticks, right? You know I love my music. So we're gonna focus on this. As a matter of fact, let's get these out of here for the rest of the day because they're just gonna make a bunch of noise for us. One of the keys to our padded gear bag is the right materials. This is a canvas that I'm using and canvas is generally more moisture resistant. And with that moisture resistant, especially for things like speakers or eyeglasses or whatever, I wanna keep the, the water off of them. The other thing I'm using inside of my bag to help keep all of my gear and stuff safe is this wonderful black bosal foam. This is uh, called inner foam and it's a nice dense little foam. It's about an eighth inch thick and it comes in black or in white. This is a single side uh, fusible that I can go ahead for the application of putting it in between these two layers. Of my canvas, oh, I guess while we're on supplies, let's not get going too far. Also, you're gonna need some of the paracord in whatever favorite color you've got. And I, of course, love those little cord locks that I use all the time. I love the ones that have the two holes. And we have a complete supply list and link for you right in the description below. So as we're getting started here to create this drumstick style or paintbrush style size bag, what I did is I had 18 inch long. There are two of them right of my canvas and these are cut at 10 and a half inches wide for this particular thing and what i then did and i've kind of gotten a little started i wanted to use some decorative threads one so that it looks cool and two so that you can see it at home thank you for all the positive comments you always help me get better and better at my videos here so with the turquoise thread what that's really doing as i bring it in is i've done a single fold with about a quarter inch seam allowance on the two sides and on the, what I'm gonna call, top of both of my pieces to become my layered. We're going to machine quilt all of this together, but not free motion, so don't you panic if you've never done free motion before. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna set my drawstring into my work, so I'm gonna set these together like this. What I've done is I put them wrong sides together and I am going to go ahead and bring over about three quarters of an inch so that this finished edge catches the top of this finished edge. And to make my life easy, I've already pre-cut my draw cord. It is about twice as long as the bag itself. So I'm gonna lay it like this. I'm gonna fold this over like this and I'm gonna top stitch again. So I'm just gonna scoot that up a little bit here and I'm going to top stitch it with my sewing machine so at the moment I don't want my seam guide those are wonderful little seam guides that I love to use this one I just spun it out of the way and at the moment to make things look cool I'm going to lay down some top stitching next to that turquoise thread but not right on top of it so I have two lines of parallel stitching And just a reminder, I'm catching that other finished edge in there too. And I'll point out exactly why here in just a second. Let's get this seam locked down nice. Now, the draw cord casing is completely done at this point. And because we folded over these edges first, now the edge up in here is finished because I folded over both of the raw edges on the tops. Now everything in my casing works beautifully. That is all smooth, that is all done. You're welcome. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool myself. Now, what's probably happened is the bottom of this has maybe become offset. See, let me flip it over so you can see what's gonna happen next anyways. So things may have shifted, so we're gonna just trim first. And that's because of the way I did that fold over the top. Now that that is trimmed down, I took a chalk pencil. This is gonna be the markings for the diamond sewing. So to create the grid that you see here, I simply took a ruler and I laid it from one corner down to the next and I drew with my chalk pencil one line. From that point on, the distance between them are just one and a half inches in between uh, the lines. 
This I'm going to consider the inside of the bag. Just to point out, this is where that double stitching shows up. That kind of becomes the outside of the bag now. So my chalk won't even have to be erased. So I've got a nice deep marking so I can see them. Now I'm ready to get my bosal foam inside. And the bosal foam itself comes in a variety of different ways. I'm using a single sided fuse. So this is the flat side. As I flip it, hopefully you can see there's a bit of a texture to it. That's the glue. And I want the glue secure up against those lines just to make my life easy. I've cut my bosal down so that it fits within my seam allowances. I'm hoping you can see both of the threads on both sides there. And I don't want my bosal to go all the way out to the edges because that'll just simply make our seam allowances too bulky. While you're building your own size bags, remember seam allowances, we're going to have often four layers of this canvas coming together. So we just don't want the bosal out in the seam allowance if at all possible. That's why we've set it up this way. So now I'm going to just simply lay this down over the top and I'm double checking with my eyes to make sure that the edges look nice and I do want to take a moment and I want to press this bosal foam or the inner foam to my top layer. I often will use a little bit of steam to help it really set. And this is just so things don't slip around. You don't have to use a fusible, but I have it to my advantage, so I might as well use it. Okay. That feels really nice and secure. To make my life easier before I even go over to the sewing machine, though, I'm going to trim this down one last time. And I'm also making sure everything's square, so I might be trimming a little canvas as I go at that moment. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start on one of the corner lines here and we're going to sew all the way to the other corner and then we're going to do all of those lines parallel in both directions. Watch this. So here I am starting up in here. I also want to try to make sure, if possible, I'm starting my sewing right on that top stitch line just so it looks really cool when I'm done. I'm going to take a few stitches, back stitch right to that point. And I'm just watching that chalk go right up the center of my sewing foot. All the way through the corner. And back stitch again. I'm going to come over one more line. So I've done this one. I'm going to come over this one. Then this, move all the way here, and then I'll go back and fill in the other direction. Always working from this same side here. Locking it in right at that other turquoise thread. We'll trim all of those thread tails later. And as a matter of fact, after I finish this one, why don't I jump into caffeinated mode and get all of our diamond sewing done so I can talk about the next step. I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Now here you can see that I've done all of the diamond sewing and I'll trim those thread tails in a little bit, but I'm ready to get started on building out the bag. So this is kind of the construction of the fabric. So no matter what size you're doing, you're going here first so that you've got a two-sided canvas, beautiful looking, well padded, secure bag to go with. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to put some cool circles in the bottom to make this like it would fit for my speaker as well. So one of the things I also did was I took some five inch squares of the bosal and of the canvas. I did four canvas and two of the bosal. So you're going to make two of these basically. The diamond grid on this are three quarters of an inch. The diamond on this was one and a half, right? So just it kind of fits together better. And then once these little squares were made, I'm going to need to get myself some circles to put in the bottom of mine. So I'm going to use my really cool little rotary compass. And this is set right now for about a three inch circle for myself. And I just did that by measuring around my bag a little bit. So now I'm going to cut my circle out. 
Give myself a little extra help, all those layers. And I'm gonna go around a couple times to make sure I've cut through all the layers now. Beautiful, okay. So that's ready to go. And for that little circle like that there, we're gonna go ahead now, the construction, let's think this through. Construction wise, we're gonna have this sealed over like this, and we're gonna be able to finish these edges. I'm considering this the right sides of the bag, because that's where I had my double stitching on the top. Okay, so I wanna go right sides together with my little circle. I'm gonna sew the circle in at the beginning. For me, it's easiest at the machine like this. So I take my circle and I kind of slide it up to my top. It's gonna sit in here like this, right sides together. You can see I used a different color bobbin thread to help kind of keep track a little bit too. So here, right sides together, and I come on over to the machine. Now I wanna leave a little bit of an opening back at that edge so I can secure it. So basically back up here, I have about that quarter inch, maybe even a half here. And if you haven't ever done something like this, this can be a little bit tricky. So take it slow. And if your circle doesn't fit, we can always unstitch it and put it back in. We can always make other circles. I know a guy who's done that a couple times himself. So let's get started with a nice little slow stitch. Keep your needle down position. And what I'm doing now is I'm just holding the circle and I'm letting the circle kind of feed in. And I'm kind of pulling the circle up as I go. Just gonna come in nice and slow. All my layers there together. And as I'm coming around here, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. Now what I've learned for myself, it's kind of a two part step because to get that little join to come together is a little tricky. So what I like to do now is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna capture this. And I know it looks like it's a lot of meat going on right now out here, but it's not terrible, okay? So I'm just gonna pull this out of the way. I'm gonna come in here. Technically, my bag is right sides together and I'm catching all four of those canvas layers, no bozel right now, okay? So at this moment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna finish this outside edge while I've got a little bit of an opening down there too. I'm gonna back stitch real good down here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm sewing right up. Now what I'm looking at is this edge right along here and I can see all of my layers of canvas coming together. That's why I secured them the way I did. This is gonna come all the way up to the top of where our draw cord is waiting for us. Slow down as you approach that top because I don't want you to sew the casing for your draw cord closed. I want you to stop at your double stitching line and back stitch. Whoa, my goodness. Hey, that's okay. Everyone's okay. Safety glasses were on. I did just catch my needle. Let's talk about why. No reason to edit that out, right? I was pushing and pulling on my fabric. It's happened to all of us. It's a dangerous moment and that's why we always talk about not pushing. At this second, I have the needle bent into all of those layers. Fortunately, I had already set my back stitch. So my sewing's done. All I have to do is slowly remove this. So I'm just gonna back this up. There's a tip of that needle somewhere. I do not wanna lose it. I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna slide it out. And I'm hoping that the tip of the needle is in my fabric somewhere. And I do, I have it in there. So that's a good thing and a bad thing. I'm gonna fish that out a little bit later. But what I wanted to do is I'm just gonna show you real quick. We might make a quick bonus tip or something out of this. I'm gonna dig that needle out with a pair of pliers. I'm double checking here to make sure I have no thread tangles or anything. I'm gonna replace that needle and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back here with a fresh needle and we're ready to finish this out. Let me just point out though, that circle here we needed to catch in this last little bit of sewing. So as I come together, I'm still right sides together and I'm gonna come at the sewing machine on this side of my hump. Now this hump is gonna feel a lot like that side of your jeans. You know, and so I'm gonna lock in some back stitching and just the same reason why we broke that needle before is I was pushing a little hard so I wanna to try to eliminate as much of the bulk as possible in here. 
and let the machine do the work. Nice and slow, let the machine do the work. And then as I come around again, I captured right up into where I had that other seam allowance. So as it's finished up, before we turn it right sides out, let's just take a second and just lightly tie these together so that we don't lose our cord out of our cord lock. We'll put a cord lock on later on. Now to turn them right sides out, I like on these bigger but kind of narrow stiff tubes, and this is not an easy, this is definitely a, a hand workout. I kind of come down here at the bottom and I just kind of start rolling it with my thumbs. Hey, you know those drumsticks I had at this point? I could always come down in here and I could take a drumstick and start poking, but it is gonna take you a little bit, so just go slow with that. I want to show you the finished version here so you can see how cool it looks once we do get it right sides out there. And then you can also see how cool the bottom is there with those smaller uh, diamond grid. Here you see the cord lock has been put on. That's just a wonderful option, but that way we can really cinch those up tight so our, our strings wouldn't fall out. So then I would have just untied and slid the cord lock back on for that. If you're not interested in handling those circles on the bottom or the top of the bag, here's a fantastic option. This was another early prototype. This one here is just flat sewing, but what I did at the bottom corner is basically, as I had these pieces together, right, I went right sides together on my bottom edge, stitched it, turned it, out so that it was then um, top stitched with my right sides out on the bag. So it's a nice and flat one. This is great for paint brushes or something you want to lay flat, like maybe in your easel box, something there. I also then had uh, the need to put a topper on my bag. So I even created a little way where I could take another diamond quilted circle and I just trimmed it out with a one and a quarter inch piece that was already folded in half of the canvas itself and a little drop of glue on the edge just to keep that from unraveling. And then that part right there would just be secured with the thread of the machine right back into your bag. So the options here really, really are limitless and I hope I didn't give you too much to think about. My goal really was just to show you how to build that base construction with the padding and the bosel so that you can make whatever kind of gear bag you wanted. That's right. So in that comment sections below, I want to hear from you. What is that super special item that you had to make your very first padded gear bag for? And we'll catch you right here next time at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.